A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, Amalek came and waged war against Israel. Moses therefore said to Joshua, Pick out certain men, and tomorrow go out and engage Amalek in battle. I will be standing on top of the hill with a staff of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses told him. He engaged Amalek in battle after Moses had climbed to the top of the hill with Aaron and Hor. As long as Moses kept his hands raised up, Israel had the better of the fight. But when he let his hands rest, Amalek had the better of the fight. Moses' hands, however, grew tired, so they put a rock in place for him to sit on. Meanwhile, Aaron and Hor supported his hands, one on one side and one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. And Joshua mowed down Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading for today is taken from the book of Exodus. We would like to reflect on persistence. Persistence. In this first reading, we see the focus is on persistence in prayer. The people Israel will be engaged in battle against the Amalekites. And uh, aside from soldiers and weapons, Israel has God to depend on. I know in our contemporary military strategies, you won't f factor in God and prayer as a major weapon or tool to defeat your enemy. But this is God's people. The figure of Moses looms large. He gives instructions to Aaron to gather the soldiers, the people who will face the forces of Amalek. And surprisingly, the faith of Moses surfaces. He will hold the staff of God with his hand as the men of Israel engage in battle. When you say hands up, raised up high, that is a posture of prayer. So, as the soldiers engaged in war, their chief would be praying with his hands extended up to heaven in supplication, in trust. In this passage, we see that as Moses continues to lift his hands in prayer to God, the Israelites win. The moment he stops praying, the moment he puts his hands down, meaning he gets tired of praying, he stops praying, he decides to stop praying for a while, then the tide changes. The Israelites get beaten up. And so Moses will raise his hands again, meaning he will go back to prayer. And when his hands already got tired, they even put rocks to sustain his hands so that these hands will remain praying hands. Aaron and her supported even the hands of Moses. They lifted the hands of Moses. You have these two persons trying, trying their best to encourage Moses never to give up praying. They were there, what probably could be called as prayer partners, enabling Moses to persevere in prayer with his hands lifted up to God. This is a beautiful story. For some, this might be unbelievable, but it is true. Persistence in prayer. Here we learn the lesson that persistence in prayer happens only when there is faith. 
when someone believes that God hears us, that God is dependable, that God is trustworthy, then this person will not get tired of praying. Who gives up on praying? Who does not persevere in prayer? Those whose faith is not that deep. Those whose faith in God you know, surfaces and then again uh, drops dead the next minute. They don't find prayer something that should be done constantly. It is faith in God. Faith in God that sustains not only prayer, but our perseverance in prayer. Moses is a model to us. It is God who will win the battle for us. And so we turn to Him. It is not our men, it's not our soldiers, it's not our weapons that will claim victory for us. It is God. So to Him we turn, and to Him we give our faith. We offer our faith. So this story is not just about Moses. It is not just about Moses who continues to pray for his people. It is really about faith and about the God who loves us and who will fight for us. But will he find faith, especially expressed in prayer? A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by His appearing and His kingly power, Proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The Word of the Lord Our second reading for this Sunday is taken from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. We have been reflecting on persistence, perseverance. In the first reading, we focused on persistence in prayer because of faith, a faith that is steadfast, expressed in persistence in trusting and loving prayer to God who will defend His people. In the second reading, we find in the first part, St. Paul reminding Timothy of how his faith really grew from his knowledge of sacred scriptures. Sacred scriptures as the source of the wisdom of faith. This is how Timothy acquired his faith, by listening to the Word of God and acquiring the wisdom that only faith could give. This is an important aspect of faith, listening to the Word of God. Are we persistent in listening to the Word of God? Or do we easily get tired of the Word of God? Do we easily give up on listening to God's Word? So my dear brothers and sisters, one aspect of prayer, one aspect of a prayerful life is listening to God who speaks to us through the sacred scriptures. 
If in the first reading, we find prayer more as a petition to God, defend us, O God. In the second reading, we have an important dimension of prayer, which is listening. We don't truly encounter God without listening to Him. And the Word of God is available to us. St. Paul reminds Timothy that sacred scripture is inspired by God. It is God who is the real author of the sacred scripture. And so, attentiveness to the Word of God leads us not to any form of wisdom, just any form of wisdom, but divine wisdom. For it is God who communicates to us. Let us develop this aspect of prayer. I am not saying that we should stop our prayer of petition, begging God in our trust and confidence in Him. That is important. But equally important is the aspect of prayer of persistent listening to God's Word. Now, what is the fruit of a persistent listening stance to God's Word in prayer. In the second reading, we find one fruit of that prayerful listening, and it is persistence, perseverance in mission. What I have heard from God, now I share, I teach to others. So prayer and evangelization come together. I encounter God in prayer by listening to His Word. And it is the same God and the same Word of God that I proclaim to others in my mission. If I do not pray, what do I have to share? If I don't listen to the Word of God, what will Timothy proclaim to others? His own Word? Or the word of Paul? Probably, but definitely not God's word. So I love this second reading because it tells us that per persistence in prayer is at the root also of persistence in mission. With faith, we listen to God's word. With faith, we also proclaim God's word. And St. Paul tells Timothy, be persistent in teaching the word of God. Proclaim it, whether convenient or inconvenient. Whether the time is uh, right or not too right, you proclaim the Word of God. Whether it is beneficial to you or quite harmful to you, then doesn't matter. Persevere in your mission and do it with a lot of patience. That's another term for perseverance. The impatient just stops. But when you are patient, you persevere because you believe, because you love. And dear brothers and sisters, what a beautiful lesson from the second reading on this World Mission Sunday. Persistence in prayer bearing fruit in persistence in mission. A reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remain faithful to what you have learned and believed, because you know from whom you learned it, and that from infancy you have known the sacred scriptures, which are capable of giving you wisdom for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for refutation, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that one who belongs to God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by His appearing and His kingly power, Proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it is convenient 
or inconvenient. Convince, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. The Word of the Lord. Our second reading for this Sunday is taken from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. We have been reflecting on persistence, perseverance. In the first reading, we focused on persistence in prayer because of faith, a faith that is steadfast, expressed in persistence in trusting and loving prayer to God who will defend His people. In the second reading, we find in the first part, St. Paul reminding Timothy of how his faith really grew from his knowledge of sacred scriptures. Sacred scriptures as the source of the wisdom of faith. This is how Timothy acquired his faith by listening to the Word of God and acquiring the wisdom that only faith could give. This is an important aspect of faith, listening to the Word of God. Are we persistent in listening to the Word of God? Or do we easily get tired of the Word of God? Do we easily give up on listening to God's Word? So my dear brothers and sisters, one aspect of prayer, one aspect of a prayerful life is listening to God who speaks to us through the sacred scriptures. If in the first reading we find prayer more as a petition to God, defend us, O God, in the second reading we have an important dimension of prayer, which is listening. We don't truly encounter God without listening to Him. And the Word of God is available to us. St. Paul reminds Timothy that sacred scripture is inspired by God. It is God who is the real author of the sacred scripture. And so, attentiveness to the Word of God leads us not to any form of wisdom, just any form of wisdom but divine wisdom, for it is God who communicates to us. Let us develop this aspect of prayer. I am not saying that we should stop our prayer of petition, begging God in our trust and confidence in Him. That is important. But equally important is the aspect of prayer of persistent listening to God's Word. What is the fruit of a persistent listening stance to God's Word in prayer? In the second reading, we find one fruit of that prayerful listening, and it is persistence, perseverance in mission. What I have heard from God, now I share, I teach to others. So prayer and evangelization come together. I encounter God in prayer by listening to His Word. And it is the same God and the same Word of God that I proclaim to others in my mission. If I do not pray, what do I have to share? If I don't listen to the Word of God, what will Timothy proclaimed to others his own word or the word of Paul? Probably, but definitely not God's word. So I love this second reading because it tells us that per persistence in prayer is at the root also of persistence in mission. With faith, we listen to God's word. With faith, we also proclaim God's word. And St. Paul tells Timothy, be persistent in teaching the Word of God. Proclaim it, whether convenient or inconvenient. Whether the time is uh, right or not too right, you proclaim the Word of God. Whether it is beneficial to you or quite harmful to you, then 
doesn't matter. Persevere in your mission and do it with a lot of patience. That's another term for perseverance. The impatient just stops. But when you are patient, you persevere because you believe, because you love. And dear brothers and sisters, what a beautiful lesson from the second reading on this World Mission Sunday. Persistence in prayer bearing fruit in persistence in mission.